the the real problems everybody knows uh, that uh, you know, money is not going to fix it. You know, boosting the money supply will not bring unemployment down in real terms. What's you know, there, there's a lot of things wrong there, uh, and the same with economic growth. It won't get ESCOM to switch on and function beautifully, right? <laughs> What lies behind calls to change the mandate of the Reserve Bank of South Africa? Would such a move be a good idea or a bad idea? Would this solve the rampant inflation that we're seeing in South Africa at the moment? Joining me to unpack these issues is Richard Grant. Richard is the Professor of Finance and Economics at Cumberland University in Tennessee, and he's also a senior consultant for the Free Market Foundation. Richard, thanks very much for being with me. I thought we'd start off just with this idea of a mandate of a central bank, and we can obviously focus on the, the South African Reserve Bank in this example, but what lies in, in a mandate of a reserve bank? What, what is the sort of content thereof? Those who create the, uh, a central bank, uh, in this case, it was uh, it was really with the, with the parliament. Now, there have obviously, this, the reserve bank has existed for many decades, uh, and the, the the goal is to make sure that you contain what it does. So whenever something is created uh, by Parliament, then they've got to have rules to, to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. So in in the current manifestation, they've got a focus, primary focus on maintaining RAND stability. Now that can mean obviously what's the standard for that. Uh, that it's not specified so clearly, so there's some there's a lot of room there, but uh, we we naturally have assumed that that would mean keep inflation low uh, and stable, not you know not just uh, not to be bouncing around. So the question is, what is low and what is stable? You know, how how much tolerance will we have, and how you know, to, to whom do they have to answer? The, the other part, by the way, of the of the mandate is important in that, that they're supposed to function independently of political influence. If the money supply is controlled by the whims of politicians, their needs can be quite urgent at times, especially before elections. We've seen it happen uh, in, in many places and many times. And so the temptation would be to put pressure on, on them to, to boost inflation, to give a sort of that artificial stimulus before an election. And then there's always a crash, by the way, after that, or at least a, a depressed period of, of uh, restructuring. So that's where it stands now. You know, the calls now, and it, this is not unusual, I mean, this is done elsewhere, but calls for a broader mandate. In other words, look at unemployment or employment uh, and to look at just economic growth in general. If you mix up the, the goals, then you effectively you've got the central bank riding more than one horse. And there's the danger then, are there trade-offs? Do they see trade-offs? Mm -hmm. right? Economists don't agree on everything here. So some, some actually believe, still believe, that you need to raise unemployment in order to fight inflation. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, that's clearly a fallacy. Uh, we've been dealing with it for years. It has a fancy name, you know, the Phillips curve. And you know, if people were to understand it, it's, uh, it, it, uh, you know, that's one thing, but it is abused and uh, can, can lead to serious problems. So that, that's why I would say it's, it's a bad idea to expand that mandate. Let the Reserve Bank focus on one thing and get it right. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, I mean, this issue between fiscal policy, monetary policy, all this sort of stuff, if you if one were to play devil's advocate, okay, fine, change the mandate, the, the Reserve Bank can target unemployment, can you know do this thing, do that thing. If you were to look at constraints on the economy of South Africa, why in your view would changing the mandate not resolve any of those issues? Because it's, I mean, you can obviously promise these things, you can have your summits, you can mention it in the state of the nation address, not that the president did in his latest one, surprisingly, but you know, it is being circled now in the ruling party. If you were to change the mandate, why wouldn't it fix some of those basic issues that you know, so deeply plague the South African economy. The trouble with trying to use money supply, as I said, I used the word artificial uh, a few minutes ago, and that you're trying to get something for nothing. There is, the purpose of the money is to help us make calculations and to facilitate exchanges. 
if you have inflation, if you're using it uh, intermittently to stimulate, okay, and that word is a dangerous word, stimulate the economy, then it, you actually ruin that function. And that, that, that uh, calculation function is extremely important to everything that happens in, when people are using the currency. So to mess that up, it, it, there are hidden harms that yeah, people can't see. You get a short-term effect, but it, but it does hurt. Uh, in, in the long run. So that's the problem. So the the real problem is everybody knows uh, that uh, you know, money's not going to fix it. You know, boosting the money supply will not bring unemployment down in real terms. What's you know, there, There's a lot of things wrong there. Uh, and the same with economic growth. It won't get ESCOM to switch on and function beautifully, right? It, there are other things that are a distraction. So, you know, we can get into those issues and, and obviously all oh, government spending as well. Yes, there is that confusion between fiscal policy and monetary policy that uh, uh, when uh, there's too much government spending, debt goes up, there is that political pressure for the central bank, the reserve bank to uh, monetize that debt. And what does that mean? Well, they create money out of nothing or currency out of nothing, I should say. And, and I said, I, I corrected myself in a way because I like to emphasize that the value of the money is really uh, due to people using that currency in trade. If they're not doing things out there, then you, you can't fool anybody. That, that money will lose its value if, if people aren't using it. And then Richard, just as a final question in terms of you know, asking you to peer into the future, as it were, so putting you on the spot there, telling us what is going to happen, at, or what you think is going to happen at least. So you've got the potential risk of changing the mandate of the Reserve Bank, but what other risks do you foresee for the fiscus, um, for that sort of, for that side of the economic equation over the next year or so? Of course, we've got elections next year and a general election, um, you know, maybe certain forms of of sort of social spending, that sort of thing, but but what what is your in your analysis in terms of those risk factors for South Africa? Well, I I, I do worry about the protection of property rights. That's that's an ongoing thing, and it's a, you know it's that's a, an attitude and understanding of just how important that is. But the, the the key thing, in fact, probably one of the biggest dangers is keeping business and government separate. You know, that's that that's a, a worldwide problem right now. You know, if the if the government has influence over business and and vice versa, it looks sometimes it looks as if well they're lobbying. There's a lot of money flowing, uh, influencing things, and some of that is you might say not appropriate. Okay, you know, some of it's obviously legitimate. You want to support things, but uh, but uh, it, it, you've got uh, governments can influencing what businesses can do and controlling them way beyond what it appears uh, uh, the government uh, is, is doing. So those regulations, that kind of influence, give government a far greater influence and people lose their ability to function properly or, or you know, in a manner that's, you might say, cooperative and, uh, and help, would help people to grow. Government spending, too much. Okay. I mean, there's a grocery list I could give you. Yeah, too much government spending. They've got to cut that back. They can't. That it's, I said it about money. Inflating won't solve the problems. The more government spends, effectively, the greater burden on everybody, and nobody escapes that. You know, you know, we sometimes call well, inflation is a tax on on people. It's a very regressive tax too, and the government spending is really the same thing, and it matters what they spend it on. If a lot of it's just transfers, I mean, I've, you know, I'd like to see more data on this, but when half the population is received from the government, we've got a serious problem. That's a, an incentive problem. Uh, and uh, if, if that money is going into consumption, it's not going into investment. That, that's the, the, big, the, the big harm for the future is capital de destruction uh, and just destruction in the sense also that a lot of it simply won't be formed it won't be won't be invested put into put into place so and that's what hurts is, is hurting many countries right now is is this uh failure to make for for an investment 
Thank you very much for watching. Please remember before you leave to like this video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not yet done so. Until next time, this has been Chris Hutting for the Center for Risk Analysis. Take care.